champagne, chocolate, flowers. So, why are we here? It's called a turn-down service. They do it in all the posh places. <laughs> but this isn't posh, is it? And why you'd think I'd want to stay in a third-rate B&B only yards from my house beats me. Louise wants a quick sale. We've got the readies. I wanted you to experience the ambience, see the potential for yourself. <laughs> potential? Even the cockroaches are demanding a refund. <laughs> we could drive a hard bargain, exploit a misfortune, be a pushover for a man with your Machiavellian talents. Why would I want to do that? Because you're bored. Admit it. So am I. We could work miracles and would rake it in if this place was run properly. You said yourself you used to love running that wine bar. <laughs> You're serious? Sometimes when people face big changes in their lives, it can be very unsettling for them, makes them act strangely, makes them depressed, hyperactive. Yeah, but this would be a new lease of life for you, I promise. I'm not talking about me. Oh. Giving up your share of the pub must have been very difficult for you. And I've been thinking, um, you obviously need a proper break, so why don't we go to that smart place you picked out? A uh, couple of days, if you like. Disco buff. Jump in that pub is the best move I've ever made. And as for this place being third rate, it wouldn't be if we were part owners. And as for the fact that it's so close to home's a bonus, surely? I've seen the future. And it isn't chintz. I think we should make Louise a cheeky offer. Valerie. Yes, my precious. You're a first-class, five-star, fur-lined, gold-plated fruitcake. Break it in. <laughs> this place. <laughs> Never in a million years. Why don't you sleep on it? Hey, well done tonight. Hunt has loved you. Especially Sandy, our resident expert. Oh, thanks. I really enjoyed myself. Good. Right. Viv's making me a cheese toasty. That's love for you. <laughs> Fancy a nightcap? Well, I'll stay for one or two. Great. <laughs> See you tomorrow, Pat. Yeah, good night. Night. Good night, Marlon. Night. So, right. What are we having? <laughs> Drop a gin? Oh, yeah, let's go. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Right. What the hell were you thinking? Well, I take it we won't be playing Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, then. Hmm. I told you you shouldn't have gone round there. I knew you'd be like this. It's pathetic. I just wanted to say goodbye. Oh, all this misplaced sentimentality over two empty little words to a boy you don't even know. He's my son. I can't just turn my feelings off. And what feelings would those be exactly? I'm his father. No, you're not. No, you are a father to Nathan, Will and Maisie. You watched them being born and you have been there for them ever since. I know. Y you're nothing but an anonymous sperm donor, so stop wallowing in it. Ryan's a... Stranger! He doesn't know who you are. And he never will. But I do. I know. Well, then just keep a lid on it for a couple of days. Can you do that? Just a couple of days. Tonight was the last chance that I'll get to... What? To what? To get to know him. To make him like you, respect you. <laughs> and what, are you going to tell him the truth then? Oh, and then some big tearful goodbye at the airport, huh? Exchange emails, send photos, join a flaming social networking site. I can't help it! Yes, you can! And you will! You know what? Remorse makes us do very stupid things, Mark. Things that hurt people. Now, I need you to stay strong for us, for this family. The ones you chose to be with, yeah? Okay. I'll stay away. I promise. It's only a couple of days, right? And 
dear me. Right then. Well, Stubborn comes to mind next here on ITV1 with our Thursday night visit to Coronation Street. Norris has got an ultimatum for Ramsey. And then answers and clues are proving hard to find in the bill at nine this evening.